much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. I want to go back to a, um, something we talked about a little bit more, an observation that there seems to be a little bit of inconsistency in the draft with respect to streamlining and with respect to um, this national interest. Um, and, and I guess the, the um, observation I would have is that the, the system we have developed for science, this peer-reviewed system, has proven so effective because it has been independent of the government. Uh, and we don't do a lot of supervising of what what basic scientific research would be because, and by its nature, we don't know, really know where it's going to lead. So, does it strike you as inconsistent with that to add this overlay of a governmental judgment on whether it's in the national interest? Does that concern you at all, Mr. Dr. Colleen? Maybe. Well, the thing that I am, if I have a concern, it's 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 mostly the message that the, this bill will send out. To the, to the world, in fact, that, uh, and, and, I, and as my testimony indicated, I hope it's a vibrant, enthusiastic, let's take on the 21st century U.S. Uh, can-do kind of, um, rather than one that seeks to find the constraints and, right. and, and stiffen the sinews. I think uh, my personal experience with NSF, it's a magnificent national asset. Um, and, and we don't want to throttle it back, nor do we want to have the self-policing get to a point where there are clear infractions of integrity and accountability. Um, so this is a delicate balance that you, that you have to face. We need to unleash the, the, the high-performance aircraft here uh, and recognize that a lot of the flaps are going to have to be moving uh, to keep it stable and, and flying and, and, and not limit the opportunity space. Yeah, and it face. strikes me that we're the envy of the world in what we've created. Uh, we've done it, and we've respected the, um, that, that innovation happens outside of this building, to say the least. Uh, and for us to be putting anyone in judgment of what's in the national interest in that context seems to me to be uh, uh, shooting ourselves in the foot. The other thing I make an observation of is that uh, with respect to streamlining, we have, um, we're asking in Section 301 that the um, Office of Science and Technology Policy look at regulations trying to make streamline. And now we're adding this uh, section 104 new re new requirements that would increase the administrative burden on on NSF and on its researchers. Uh, so it's it just seems to me that we ought to be combing out of these out of this um, the interference that the government would pose on a system of scientific research, not just with NSF but across the uh, across the board, including things like NIH that has proven to be so innovative and. Um, and productive and has set us up as the leaders in science in, in the world. So it does strike me as odd that we would be in this committee trying to find ways to constrain what has been so successful. Um, which, which bureaucratic, um, uh, assuming you accept the notion that we should be asking the government to decide uh, what, what the um, uh, scientific value or the national interest is in this research, uh, what would be the, what would be the um, kind of bureaucratic setup and findings that wouldn't interfere in the way that I'm expressing a concern about it. Do you see any way that you could set it up without, without interfering in, in what's been such a success already? Anyone? Can, can I step in sure. here? Yeah, I, I'm, I think it's important not to, so peer, it's, it's certainly important to protect peer review from political interference and from bureaucratic excess. But it's also important not to treat it as sacrosanct and as if it's always perfect. I think I've been, I've never administered uh, peer reviewed programs, but I've been a peer reviewer. I've been on NSF peer review panels. Um, so I'm familiar, and I've been the subject of, pe of peer review, uh, both positive and negative. Um, so no one thinks it's perfect, and I think that it's important to understand how to uh, improve it, especially in a time of fierce competition. Um, getting back to, to the uh, Economist article that I opened my yeah. statement with, I think there is evidence, in fact, that the peer review uh, process is not up to some of the tasks of dealing with the challenges of a highly competitive, um, highly kind of uh, hype-driven enterprise. So I think we need to take that seriously, and I think it's really important to have this discussion. As I've said, I'm not particularly um, attracted to the specific provision, provision of Section 104, right. but I do think the goal of being smarter about this is appropriate. And I think that NSF's response uh, this summer in basically refusing to talk about what its process was did not serve it well because, in fact, they should be proud of the peer review process and should be willing to uh, to talk about how. As it I understand it, the the the, um, 
the issues you've identified aren't aren't ones that would be dealt with in this building as well as in the scientific community at large. I'm not For so instance, sure. I think it's publication of negative information or the way we don't make data available early in the process. Um, those are all things that could be done without a determination of whether a specific scientific research project is in the national interest. I, th this my is time true, has expired, but, sir, but so. Congress is often very good at providing signals that allow NSF to act. Different issue. But, but thank you very much for being here. Appreciate it.